Welcome to part one of the PVXR1200 Powered Mixer Teardown. I'm Nick. Picked this thing up for 20 bucks as is because it's pretty much just scrap. Um, besides the usual wear and tear of missing some knobs and stuff, there's you can tell that there's been heavy water damage. I mean, it's been road loved. Uh, but I've actually taken a peek inside already, and it looks pretty bad. I don't think it's electrically safe at the moment. Uh, yeah, so you may think, well, yeah, it, it's a giant brick. What are you going to do with it? Well, my plan is to turn it into a synthesizer, or more so, scrap out all of the different pots and sliders and maybe some of the internal components. Uh, maybe you can reuse the VU or the graphic EQ, depending upon what works. Uh, but for the moment, this is part one, and we're going to take a look inside. Also, I'm going to try to reuse all these jack connectors, because that's got to be like a couple hundred dollars worth of jack connectors, I would imagine, with the uh, quarter inch, XLR. Okay, well, that's about all the connectors. Anyway, first up for tearing this down, take off the four screws in the back. Mine only had one, hooray. Then go ahead and remove however many screws you've got on top here. And this is where you start noticing the water damage when you take the screws out. Go ahead and take off this bottom panel with the uh, cord harness thing there. I only put one screw in, how are there two now? And I previously opened this, but I know something now that you need to do. You go ahead and remove these wooden side panels here. Here's our lovely fan. You can already see the back of the boards and the ribbon going across as well. Some jumper cables. For this teardown, I recommend a good electric drill to speed things up. No, I said a good electric drill. Well, we've got our usual life that was living in at one point. Uh, interesting little plasticky wood, faux wood sideboard things. Uh, lovely paint job. Uh, signs of road use, water, junk, and so on. So here's our, here's the bulk of our weight right here. This is a 900 watt transformer. Two large electrolytic capacitors. We'll just see if they're any good at all. Odd combination of thousands of fuses stacked on top of each other. Here's uh, what I would imagine are the two main amplifier boards. These are identical boards, but flipped. So it's probably left and right channel and so on. Here's quite interesting for the 20 bucks. I mean, it's worth it right here. This is a spring reverb tank, which I'll do a, probably its own separate entire video about that. Moving on, we can see our, our backplane boards for all of our connectors, as well as uh, another board for the much higher power connectors of all the uh, amplified speaker things, um, power mains input, a few other things, and then there's all of our assumed completely identical mixer boards until you get to the the last one with the actual buses. So in this video I'm going to go ahead and take out the amplifier boards as well as the reverb tank. Output and input coaxes are labeled, so we'll just take these jacks off. We'll be replacing them with better ones, but just to get the circuit figured out. Here's the reverb tank. It's got two little transducers. It sends some audio down those springs and basically makes fake reverb through a convoluted process. We'll explain in our video. Also what's fun is that you can affect the coils directly and cause weird and strange sound effects. For the power supply we can assume I actually don't know the direction of that fan, but I assume it blue, blows air, intakes air from the bottom, blows it across the heat sinks under here, and then it just kind of wafts its way out the uh, back vents there. Uh, or it's possible they're, they're sucking air through. We will find out. Hmm. 
Now we've got that back taken off, we can focus a little more closely on this power side of things. Looks like the only logical way to do this is to flip this over, unscrew every screw on the back, and see what falls out. I like proper socket tools, but this uh, chuck looks like it's the right size, so let's use that. Nothing falls off, because it looks like all the top screws have to come off as well, and or only, either way. But now that we've got the socket trick, we can take these off very quickly. Here's the main power supply board and the transformer. And by power supply, I mean only crudely a power supply. It's a transformer. It's got a bridge rectifier. And there's capacitors. Unregulated DC power supply. You can see a few caps probably across there. Big large resistor. These weird fuse things people have done, I don't know what with. And the caps, we'll take those out. And then we'll take out the transformer and measure its weight because it is, uh, it's got some, got some weight to it. Here's our two capacitors. They are capacitor technology, 10,000 microfarads, 75 volt DC. And uh, without it saying no PCBs, we can assume these are crazy dangerous capacitors. And here's our transformer, PV Electronics, 17.4 pounds. 